Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to watch the live streams, and like and subscribe for less rot next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Star Scourge Radon, my personal favorite boss in Elden Ring. It's probably because his backstory totally sounds like something I would use for a PC. He loves his horse so much, but he got too big to ride it, so he learned gravity magic to make himself lighter. Then figured, eh. I got gravity magic. Might as well 1v1 the entire cosmos. Legend. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to be large and in scourge, becoming a big boy and slamming down with the heaviest weapons. Next, we need to take our horse to the Old Town Road and ride until we can't know more, which is forever. You can't be killed. Finally, we need to make it rain. Meteors! Hey, if you like building character and Elden Ring, we're doing building character in Elden Ring on this channel. So subscribe and then you can watch all those videos. We've done Batman, Wolverine, Link, and Obi-Wan so far. Go check those videos out after this one. Thank you. For stats, we're using the standard point buy from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep an eye on those multi-classing minimums. Strength and intelligence up at 15. You're the biggest of boys, that means you have the biggest of brains. Wisdom at 13. Animal handling is important if you're gonna be riding your horse through space. Charisma and constitution are lower at 10. You're intimidating, but not great at talking since the whole rot affliction cannibalism thing, and your defenses have been lowered because of the uh, rot affliction thing. Your sister really screwed you over. My two fingers are crossed for a full-powered Radon time travel boss fight in the DLC. Dexterity at 8. Subtlety is for fools and cowards. It's also how you use bows, which might seem important, but I'll have a better option for you. Don't worry. Radon is the son of the moon and Radagon, so he's a bit divine. That's good enough for me to call him an Asimar, specifically a Scourge Asimar. It's so perfect, it's even got Scourge right in the name. Bump your strength by two and your intelligence by one with your two free points. Enjoy 60 feet of dark vision. Celestial resistance to resist necrotic and radiant damage. Holy is his highest resistance after all. The game doesn't like holy damage. Healing hands lets you heal a creature as an action, an amount of times equal to your total level, but he doesn't use it on himself. He uses it on his horse. The horse can't die. It's too perfect. Build your own background for Arcana and Animal Handling, and we'll grab other skills we need from the starting class. That would be fighter, by the way, letting you grab two skills from the fighter list, like athletics and intimidation. It's the soldier background. You're both a soldier and a scholar, but we'll get fighter stuff first. It gives you heavy armor proficiency and a fighting style. Two weapon fighting lets you add your ability modifier to the damage of an offhand weapon attack. If only we could use weapons that weren't light for that. You also get second wind, letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest. I can't imagine it's easy fighting constellations. Second level fighters get an action surge, letting you make two actions in one turn once per short rest, letting you string together a combo that is just too dang long. How many hits are in this thing? Leave me alone! Oh my god! Third level fighters can get large if you choose the Rune Knight Martial Archetype. That allows you to activate Giant's Might, turning your size to large and letting you add a d6 of extra damage to one weapon attack per round. Bigger sword, bigger smash. Simple math. You also get two runes you can activate to make yourself better. The Frost Rune will give you advantage on animal handling and intimidation checks, and you can add two to your strength and constitution checks for 10 minutes once per short rest. The Cloud Rune gives you advantage on deception and sleight of hand checks, not why I'm grabbing it. Instead, I want to redirect an attack that should hit one creature within 30 feet of you to hit another creature instead. Take hits for your horse, even if you don't actually have that much health anymore. You'd give your kingdom for a horse. This is also the level that Scourge Asimar get to activate Radiant Conception, dealing half your level in Radiant Damage to creatures within 10 feet of you, and you can add your level in Radiant Damage to one attack per round. Put a little starlight on those slams. Four level fighters get an ability score improvement or feat. The dual wielder feat lets you use two weapon fighting with any two weapons as long as they don't have the heavy property. That means two long swords is a go. And and you can even get plus one to your AC while wielding two weapons. It's a gift that keeps on giving. Fifth level fighters get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks with your action, or up to four with an action surge, or five with a bonus action offhand attack afterwards, all with bigger swords thanks to that dual wielder feat. Sixth level fighters get another ability score improvement, bump your strength and wisdom scores. Odd numbers don't do anything for you, so you might as well increase your animal handling while increasing how hard you slam. Seventh level rune knights get runic shield, letting you force an enemy attacking an ally to re-roll their attack roll, hopefully causing them to miss Leonard. That's right, that's Radon's horse's name. God, I love that he named his horse a person name. Such a goofball. Eight level fighters get another ability score improvement, cap off your strength to hit things as hard as possible. Like maybe one of the 12 people who are coming after you at the same time. At 
after you were blighted by Melania. It's so unfair. They should have brought at least 20. Ninth level fighters get indomitable, letting you reroll a failed saving throw once per long rest. It's the only way to live through Melania's rot dive. Kale had failed the save, but Radon passed. Tenth level rune knights get giant stature, making you permanently 3d4 inches taller, and your giant's might bonus damage upgrades to a d8. Oh no! What if we're too big for Leonard? Let's go get some gravity magic. We'll do that as a wizard. If you think his muscles are big, you haven't seen his brain. And you can use that big brain for some big gravity arrows with the cantrip sapping sting. That forces a constitution saving throw on a creature, dealing 3d4 force damage if they fail and knocking them prone. Technically, since it's a gravity spell, you can't take it until you're a gravity wizard, unless your DM approves of that, which technically is the same as every other spell in the game. Whatever. We're going Gravitar just later. I think it's a silly rule. Booming Blade lets you bring some extra oomph with a weapon attack, adding 2d8 thunder damage to the initial hit and dealing 3d8 thunder damage to a creature if they move on their turn. Panic rolling. Foolish move. Thunderclap forces a constitution saving throw on a creature within 5 feet of you, dealing 3d6 thunder damage to those that fail for a giant slam that hits everyone at the party. Tragoth. Blide. Alexander. Patches. Patches left? Good call, Patches. For your first level spells, Catapult propels an object forward, forcing a dexterity saving throw on a creature, dealing 3d8 bludgeoning damage to them if they fail. We could get a bow, or you could just catapult an arrow. Cause Fear forces a wisdom saving throw on a creature, failing that, they're frightened of you. Must have worked on Patches. Why would Radon need to scare Patches away? Is Patches stronger than Radon? Magic Missile fires three bolts of force that deal 1d4 plus one force damage for some homing gravity bombs. Earth Tremor forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures within five feet of you, knocking them prone and dealing a d6 of bludgeoning damage if they fail. First level spells don't scale well. Except for Jumpin' Long Strider, which triple a creature's jump distance or add 10 feet to their movement speed. That's 60 feet of horizontal hops or 24 feet vertically. Not quite enough to turn yourself into a meteor. We'll get there. Second level wizards can jump higher if you choose to be a graviturgist. That'll let you adjust density, letting you make a creature weigh twice or half as much. If they weigh half as much, their movement speed is boosted by 10 feet and their jump distance is doubled. So now you can giant smite and ride on a large horse. Maybe. I guess it's up to your DM because it's technically a size thing, not a weight thing. But this is the closest we can get to doing that. It also makes your horizontal jump distance 120 feet with jump spell activated 48 feet vertically. You do need that movement speed though. I don't know if you can get it, but I believe in you. You could also learn graviturgy spells like Magnify Gravity, forcing a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 10 foot radius sphere, dealing 2d8 force damage to those that fail and having their speed. Thunder Wave forces a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 15 foot cube, dealing 2d8 thunder damage to those that fail and pushing them back 10 feet. Half damage and no pushing if their horse can double jump over it. That's how you pass a con save, by the way. Third level wizards can learn second level spells. Magic weapon adds one to the attack and damage rolls of a weapon, making it magical in terms of overcoming resistances. It lasts for an hour, but requires your concentration and wouldn't apply to both weapons. I think you have better options. Like Enlarge Reduce, which makes a creature one size larger, gives them advantage on strength checks and saves, and adds a d4 of extra damage to their attacks with weapons. Mix it with your giant's might, and you are now huge size. Too big for any horse. But you're probably so big you could have Leonard ride between your legs and pretend you're riding him. He just loves going for a little gallop. What a good boy. Four level wizards get another ability score improvement. Start working intelligence for better gravity magic. We could also grab two more spells, but I don't need any. Grab something you like. Fifth level wizards can learn third level spells. Phantom Steed summons a horse with a speed of 100 feet and hangs out for an hour and doesn't require any concentration. The Radon Festival is not going to last an hour. It's the kind of party where everyone's on the floor in five minutes or less. Radon parties like Andrew WK going Super Saiyan. Melf's Minute Meteors summons six floating meteors you can send down as a bonus action on following turns, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures inside and dealing 2d6 fire damage to those that fail. They're honestly pretty easy to dodge and it's the best time to hit him when he summons them. Six level Graviturgy wizards can use gravity good with gravity well. Moving a creature five feet when you hit them with a spell attack, they fail a saving throw against a spell you cast, or they just want to move it and you cast a spell on them. That means you could use it offensively on a tarnished or supportively on Leonard. For this level spell, fly gives a creature a 60 foot flying speed for up to 10 minutes depending on your concentration. You're a great jumper, but this will let you cowabunga up to the stars. Pulse Wave forces a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 30 foot cone in front of you, dealing 6d6 force damage and pulling or pushing them 15 feet from you, depending on what you like. Half damage and no movement if they double jump the wave. That is how you pass the constitution saving throws, I'm telling you. Seventh level wizards can learn fourth level spells. Gravity Sinkhole forces a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 20 foot radius sphere, dealing 5d10 force damage to those that fail and pulling them closer to the center. We don't really need any other fourth level spells, they're just not that cool. Definitely my least favorite spell level. Eighth level wizards get another ability score improvement.
that cap off your intelligence modifier for maximum casting power. Casters use their arms to cast. More of them should hit the gym for bigger casters. Obviously. Back over to fighter now. 11th level fighters get an extra attack, letting you make three attacks with your action instead of two or six with an action surge or seven with your offhand bonus weapon attack after an action surge. If you're enlarged, that's 78 plus 74 plus 35 in a single combo or around 77 with median rolls. Our capstone is the 12th level of fighter for one last ability score improvement or feat. Obviously, we need the mounted combatant feat. That lets you take hits for your mount. If your mount passes a dexterity saving throw, they take no damage instead of half, and they take half damage on a failed dexterity saving throw, and you have advantage to checks against falling off your mount. Just lean in and take the hits for Leonard. You can handle it. You took the rot bomb from Melania. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, enlarge reduce with two weapon fighting and long swords means your standard round is four attacks that deal 1d8 plus 1d4 plus 5 damage each, basically what you'd be doing if you were a full level 20 fighter. But instead of being all fighter, you also have access to a plethora of gravity magic to control enemy position or do massive AoEs to hit whole festivals worth of foes. Finally, you're hard to get away from. With mobility options like a magic horse, extra speed from fly or long strider, and the ability to cover a 15 by 15 foot square within large and giant's might. For weaknesses, you have too many concentration options, even more than a standard caster, because apparently Gravitrigid's ability to make someone way less would be so OP if it didn't have concentration. It's not. I think it's a bad rule. You also take a while to get all your buffs going. Giant's Might, Horse, Conjuration, and Concentration spells of your choice might not be available until you've taken three turns. Finally, your dexterity saves are bad, so big AoE fireballs could be an issue. Thankfully, you have the ultimate caster counter, hitting the caster until they're dead. Storm in, throw a party, and fight the entire goddamn sky. Just maybe bond a bit with your own family. It would be sad if you had a rotten relationship with your sister. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, check out some of our other Elden Ring content. We do building character but in Elden Ring instead of Dungeons and Dragons. Run through the game as some of your favorite fictional characters. We'll also be doing a few more Elden Ring builds on this channel, so subscribe for those as well. You can even watch me play Elden Ring live if you sub to the Patreon. $1 tier. It's pretty cheap.